Okay, hi everybody. So nice to see so many friendly faces. Congratulations, Dylan, on this amazing event. I'm so excited about this. Uh, my name is Yasmin Abraham, uh, president of the Cambo Energy Group. We are a social enterprise based right here in Vancouver. Uh, we design and deliver programming to reduce energy poverty and improve housing in communities that have traditionally been underserved. We do this across BC, across Alberta, and most recently into Seattle. Um, excuse me, I think my water. Um, we do this through our three flagship programs, each that is designed to address a specific need in the market. Community power. Uh, works specifically with Indigenous nations to improve housing and take action to improve housing in their communities. Um, we often say that nations don't have an energy efficiency crisis, they have a housing crisis. And so all of our work is in service of housing and we envelop energy efficiency in that. The Home Upgrades Program is a deep energy retrofit program designed specifically to reduce energy poverty. Uh, that program is running across Alberta with our friends at Alberta EcoTrust who are here today. Um, this is the only low income energy efficiency program in Canada that is designed and delivered by the communities itself instead of a government or utility. And Empower Me, our third division, that uh, is an education and awareness program helping immigrants and newcomers access all of the important programs and retrofit uh, solutions that are out there. Okay, so this is one of my favorite cartoons. Well, at some point, they're gonna make me pay royalties on this, but not yet, not today. Um, so I won't go through all of it, but um, a couple things to keep in mind. So we have inequality, equ equity, and justice. Um, the apples on this tree are not our retrofit programs. The apples on this tree are the benefits of the retrofit program. So living in safe, comfortable, affordable, durable homes, that is what we're trying to get for everybody. The ladders on the left represent our general market programs. These are things like greener homes, uh, financing programs, grant programs, uh, PowerSmart, um, what's his name, Dave and Jacqueline on, on TV talking about heat pumps. These are, all our, these are all the things we do to help the general market take advantage and receive the benefits of our programs. The ladders on the right are where we play, creating specific solutions for our vulnerable communities. And justice, that's kind of what we're here today for, right? How do we right that tree from all of the systemic inequities and biases? Okay, where am I? Uh, so we've been doing this work for a long time. We've been doing it for 14 years now. Um, in that time, we've worked with 60 First Nation communities, upgraded 7,000 low-income households, and worked with over 60,000 immigrant families. There's a lot we could talk about today, but Dylan gave me seven minutes. So <laughs> I'm gonna keep it brief, um, but offer three insights directly from the communities themselves, uh, talk about the barriers and the customer journey, talk about data, and talk about Procurement, I know, exciting. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the customer journey. This is a customer, uh, a customer funnel and a customer decision funnel. My marketers in the room will uh, recognize this as a sales funnel. Uh, there's three, um, sorry, so all customers need to go through this funnel regardless if you're buying an iPhone or signing up for ECAP. You have to go through these processes. Uh, there are three places that we really see opportunities when it comes to our low-income retrofit programming specifically. The first one is around awareness. So this is when you want customers to really have a sense of who you are, what your program is, what problem it's going to solve. When we work with communities, we typically see very low awareness of our programming. The target market doesn't even make it into the funnel to start with. Um, additionally, a lot of immigrants and newcomers, they need different types of education and awareness. They're catching up from years of not being in Canada. So the things that they need are things like, who are the utilities? What are rebates? How do I read my bill? This information is critical before they move down this funnel. The second place is around conversion. So this is when customers decide to take advantage of the program, apply for the program. So they are um, downloading application forms, uploading income qualification criteria. And the, um, sorry, now I'm lost. So the, the challenge or what we hear from communities here is that we spend so much time as a sector in our qualification verification process 
processes, trying to make sure that the wrong people don't come into our program. And what we end up doing is choking this part of the funnel so that the right people cannot make it through. And there are ways to design programs that loosen that a little bit. Of course, we don't want the wrong people in our programs, but we need to consider how we can design programs in a way that allows more of the target market to take advantage. And happy to talk more about that in the Q&A. Uh, the third section is around loyalty and advocacy. So this is when customers, they've gone through our programs, they love the experience, they feel like, wow, that was such great customer service, it really addressed my problem, I'm gonna start talking to my friends about it, get some media. Uh, and we, I don't think we see enough, as much of this in our programs as anybody in this room would actually like. Uh, and what we hear from communities is that oftentimes, the problem that the programs are trying to solve is a mismatch between the needs of the communities, which is affordability and improved housing. So when you have that mismatch between the goals that the programs are trying to solve and the goals of the community, people are left going through those programs not feeling like their problems are resolved. And so they don't tell their friends about it. They don't, there's not a buzz in the community. Okay, let's see. Second insight is around data. Our sector was built on data, right? We have the utilities commissions, we have engineers, we have total resource cost tests. Data is everything for us. The challenge is that data also comes to us with its own tree that leans to the left and comes with its own biases. I'm gonna give you one example of this, the term visible minority. This is a very Canadian term. It is only used in Canada. Uh, from the Employment Equity Act of 1986. And the definition of this term is anybody, all the people in Canada who are not indigenous and not white. Just put them all in a big bucket. Okay. Um, okay, and so this term is actually from the census and Stats Canada defines you as a visible minority based on your responses to questions on race. So what if you answer multiple race questions. What if you're mixed race and you answer multiple? Okay, let's have a look. So if you put white in any of these races, you are defined as visible minority. If you put white and any of these races, you are defined as white. <laughs> yeah, my face exactly. And this is like what the kids would call sus. Like, <laughs> and I think for us, you know, when we start to, in this QR code, you can go onto the Stats Canada website and actually just read through this, and this is pulled right from there. Um, you know, is visible minority the right data point when we're talking about equity? If this is how we're defining it. Doesn't have any meaning, right? Doesn't have any meaning. It's just, I love the meaning. Thank you, <laughs> memes for life. Um, the second piece around data is there are significant data gaps in our sector. The data is simply not available for us to justify the work that we do. And very smart people in this room here uh, filling those gaps. We just, there was two reports released today, lots of folks on the panel. The challenge is data takes time and we need solutions now. You know, we don't know how utility cutoffs vary across race. We don't actually know the energy consumption in indigenous nations versus general population. Folks in this room have an idea because we've been working on this for so long that we have a sense, but there's no fulsome research about this. And so where that leaves is, is qualitative data and lived experiences can fill this gap. And this is not a crazy fringy idea, right? Like the education sector, the healthcare sector relies on this type of research to fulfill their needs to vulnerable communities. Uh, Empower Me has just uh, uh, created an evaluation report using a participatory narrative inquiry approach. That's a fancy way of saying storytelling. <laughs> you can download that report right on that QR. This report, uh, what it does is not only highlight the holistic needs of the community, but also begin to show how a community-based program can multi-solve beyond just energy uh, efficiency. Okay, last one, save the best for last, procurement. Bold statement, procurement is the fastest and easiest and least expensive way we can start to shift that tree to the center. 
We're already starting to see this in the US with the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act and Justice 40 initiative, where $369 billion is being allocated to clean energy retrofits, energy justice, energy burden. 40% of that $369 billion has to go to vulnerable communities. Not only the benefits of it, but they also have to deliver it. And so we're, what we're starting to see in competitive bids is proponents are required to list community-based organizations as subcontractors, required to have the signature of that community organization, the services they will provide, and the dollar amount that will specifically go to them. This does three really important things. One, it stops the tokenization of community-based organizations by proponents who simply list organizations with no intention and who are not held accountable to actually including them. Of course, that would never happen here. Number two, uh, it flows real money down to these community organizations. These are real jobs, right? A lot of people in this room have probably have their salaries covered by some of these competitive bids. They're really good jobs. And number three, it starts to build inclusivity and diversity in our sector, right? This room would look different. We would have the lived experience of the folks who are experiencing this work, helping to design and deliver the programs. So your customer journey funnel gets more effective because the people designing the programs are considering all of this. The qualitative and lived experience is embedded in all of our sector. So if anybody is releasing an RFP anytime soon, <laughs> Feel free to email me, send me a note. I will happily send you. We have, you know, we have the, the documents. You can copy and paste it. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you.